Okay, so now we're going to be talking about some nifty properties about logarithms. It's going to be awesome. I love log properties, and I'm going to make it so that you guys love it as much as I do. So, the first property we're going to be focusing on is the product property. Okay, which I wrote the product property here. It is from the Prezi slides that you saw earlier. Okay, so the product property states that if you have a log... Okay, and you are multiplying inside of the logarithm. Okay, this is not a log times a log, it's a log of a times b. Okay, so there's multiplying going on within the log. If you see that, you can separate each pieces of the multiplication into separate logs. Okay, so, and again, if you notice, you have to use the same base when you do this. So, if I have log base c of a times b, I can separate the A, I can put the A in one log, and I separate it with an addition symbol and put the other piece of the log in the other log. Okay, so you kind of think about breaking these apart into addition. Okay, and remember the base carries over. Okay, so we're going to use this logic using these, and all we're going to do is practice expanding the log. So we're going to practice using the log property. Okay, now, if you see here, I had two numbers multiplying up here, and we had two things being added together. Okay, that will hold true for all these problems. So, however many items you have in here multiplying, you'll have that many addition signs. So, let's see here. In this one, we have, for example, 1 part A. We have log base 2 of, of 4J K to the 5th. So, I have three things being multiplied, which means I will have three logarithms. Holy hot dog. Let's get going, you guys. Okay, so we're going to have three logs. I'm going to set this up. Okay, and we separate... Things that are multiplying with plus signs, plus signs when you use um, the product property of logarithms. So I'm going to have three different plus signs. Okay, and if you notice, we have the same base carry through for our property up here. So we're going to have our same base carry through to all of these logs. So my 2 is going to become the base of all of my logs. Alright, and then after this, you guys, you just place each one of these pieces that are multiplying in their own log. Okay, they had fun together, but now they want to be on their own, have some alone time. Okay, so I'm going to write the 4 in my first log, the J in the second log, and the K to the 5th in the third log. And that will be it, you guys. Don't overthink it. Okay, so again, multiplication within the log, you separate by addition signs, okay, and you put each piece into their own log. And don't forget, you have to use the same base each time. So, same thing holds for part B. Okay, if you want to try part B on your own, it's pretty much the same thing. So, if you want to try it, fast forward to the end, see if you get the right answer. Okay, so, I have two things being multiplied, which means I'm going to have two nifty logs in my problem. So, I'm going to set it up. And remember, when we have a product going on, we set it up, or we separate them with addition. Alright, now before we filled in our 4J and K to the 5th from above, we filled in the base. But, I don't see a base. Okay, now remember from our previous section, if you don't see a base, there is secretly a 10 there, which you can write it in. Uh, you don't have to. If it's bothering you, you can make all these 10s. Or if you want, you can just leave off the 10 and act like it's not there. It's a personal thing. I'll leave it up to you. Okay? And then each piece goes into their own log. So my 2 is going to go into its own log. And the Y is going to go into its own log. And that's it for part A and B. That would be our answer right here. This one and this one. Awesome job, you guys. So here's the answer to part A. And here is my answer to part B.